Our dearly departed Walther PPQ. How we'll miss you. You were such a good friend. A loyal friend. A loyal combat worthy companion. I took you on so many excursions. You were so ready for the fight. So quick to fire. So accurate. So fast. And that trigger. Damn that trigger. Yes, lightweight, easy to carry, great looking, ergonomic. We're going to miss you, Walter PPQ. I might even have a tear rolling down my cheek as I say, say this fake prayer to you. But you're gone from the marketplace. You've been discontinued. And there is much sadness throughout the land that no longer will we have your companionship in new production form. And... And no longer will we have your small combat pistol form. You'll always be in our hearts. Always. And in our minds. And on our tabletops. Nothing fancy. Round of applause for the PPQ. Yes, a prayer of remembrance for the dearly departed, beloved PPQ. At least here. At least in the project, dudes. This is a beloved pistol by TMP Pierce. By my followers, I jumped on the PPQ bandwagon early. I might have been one of its first advocates. As soon as I shot this thing, I was like, damn, son, this thing is awesome. I need to get the word out. I call it the, sniper, the sniper's pistol. Something you, a sniper would carry, and I wasn't messing around with that. Maybe in a mag pouch, maybe in a drop-down holster, maybe in horizontal carry, because it's so compact. So easy to carry, so reliable, so accurate. Sniper's Pistol. I'll keep that name intact. The PPQ Sniper's Pistol. Yeah, it's sad. No longer offered. But I'll say this to guys who are lamenting its disappearance, at least for now, from the marketplace. Where you been? You should have one, two, three PPQs. You should. We all should. I mean, it is a combat standard, lightweight, it's a trigger standard. I mean, it's really the first trigger I brought to tabletop that I was going, this gets everything right. Reset, press, uh, the pull weight, just perfect. It's renowned for how excellent it is. It's a reference standard, the Walther PPQ. Now, Walther has done a lot, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but a few really great combat handgun designs. The P99 is one of them. Uh, this TP9 series by Canik has springboarded off of that. PPQ, my favorite, I mean, at least to this point. And now we're going to talk about its replacement. The Walther PDP, here comes the Nothing Fancy Tabletop Review. I estimate, I don't know, 33 minutes. I could be wrong, though. 33 minutes. If you're looking for a short review, this ain't it. You know the score. Go to the manufacturer's website, which, by the way, is pretty good. Their website's awesome. They have some short videos that explains everything you need to know about the PDP. Great website. So if you're in a hurry, that's where you should go. Definitely. Well, here we're going to get philosophy. We're going to get systems integration. We're going to get comparisons against the PPQ. And some competitive options. I might say a few good things. Maybe a lot of good things about the PDP. And maybe a couple bad things. That's what you get. I didn't get this gun from... Guess where? That's right. Direct from Walther. Hey, I love Walther. I have no problems with him. But I usually distance myself from all the manufacturers these days usually i got it from you know who gunnies the great american gun store round of applause pdp gunnies wyatt at gunnies specifically he's very helpful at allowing me to borrow these guns if i really 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 like it i'll buy it as a cast member and you'll see it on the tabletop just like i did with this gun so this was a loaner i believe this is a loaner i can't remember i may have bought this just outright Back then, I had to buy it outright because I didn't really have associated gun stores. But Independent Voice, Nut and Fancy Project, it is made possible by my donors. Along the bottom of this video, you'll see my Patreon banner. If you feel so compelled, please join up. About the price of a hamburger. You can be a TMP Patreon member. More videos over there. It's a great group of people. Great group of people. Smaller community, I answer messages as best I can there. I always fight burnout, so I jump into messages as frequently as I can. But with, you know, pre-production, production, post-production, post it's a lot. Think about it. Join up. Thanks so much. Patreon members of TMP. 
the PDP. Hmm, the PDP. Wow. So I'm going to talk a little bit about psychology. Here comes some, some of the airtime. We're not just talking about the gun itself. Psychologically, us humans have a propensity to do the following. We have something that we really, really love. It gets replaced or taken away out of our lives. Okay? It's replaced with something else. Well, through PDP in this instance. I think it's a human tendency to automatically dislike the replacement. Yeah, I, I see a lot of heads nodding up and down in the audience. Yeah, it's just a human tendency, whether it's a family member, like your mom's dating some guy that replaced your dad. Chances are you're going to at least first hate that guy. <laughs> oh, maybe not hate him, but you're just not going to dig it. You like your dad, or maybe you don't, but in most cases, that's the way it works. What I'm here to say is give it a chance. Open your mind. Open your mind to the possibilities of greatness. Is it the same as a PPQ? No, it's very different. For one, it's bulkier. Like, this sucker was svelte. I talked about it. I was like, this is a compact combat handgun. It's on the order of eh, a little bit longer than a Glock 19, but about that, that same size. Yeah, this thing is awesome. It, this one's a little bit bulkier. Not much. It looks more bulky than it really is. Has a completely different appearance. Walther chose not to... I guess, uh, do something else with the PPQ. This is my first generation. Yeah, eat your heart out. Eat your heart out. So cool. With the old style magazine release, threaded barrel. Oh, what a great gun. Very collectible now. And they changed it to a push button magazine release in the M2s. They chose, I guess, not to do something else with the PPQ. Maybe just retire it permanently. Maybe forever. Who knows? I didn't talk to him. But... It's gone, and now we have something different that doesn't look anything like our dad. See, this is a different dad. This is a dude. It's like, wow, mom, who'd you bring home? Who is that? What is that? Well, it's PDP, honey. Yeah, I don't know if I like the looks of that thing, but at least initially you may say that. At first blush, when I looked at this, I was thinking, damn, watch. I was thinking, that kind of reminds me of, guess what, a, a Beretta APX which is a very competent combat handgun. Jardine and I tested the APX in the day. It's a good handgun. It didn't really enamor itself to us. Like we weren't in love with the Breda APX, which by the way, I went on their website today. That sucker MSRPs for only $400. That means you could probably buy it street for 300, the APX. And it's a good handgun. It is definitely good enough to own. A little bit heavier than this, 29 ounces, 29. But the, the slide serrations, remember the APX has those raised slide serrations? These are not really raised, and let's just talk about these right now. What they do is they have this milled portion of the slide, and it's kind of squarish, and that's where they're milling very deep forward and back slide serrations. So great purchase, right? Good traction with a wall through PDP. Different looking, kind of futuristic. Kind of a futuristic uh, look. Way different than the PPQ. These are very shallow, very traditional. And I love these, by the way. No problems. I really like the Walther logo in the front ones. That was awesome. Different. Different approach. How do I like these slide serrations? Uh, well, I'm going to talk about it first and second cool. And, and I'm covering this now because it's a thousand pound gorilla in the room. How it looks. I think first cool, they are totally awesome. I really like it. Second cool, I'm a little bit more meh. You know, I'm just like, oh, you know, I, second cool. Uh, I kind of said that about the APX, you know, big honking slide serrations. I wasn't so sure. I was like, ah, whatever. But first cool, the traction they provide, you betcha. I didn't really draw this from holsters. Don't know if it's going to do a cheese grater effect on it. Don't know. Don't know. Could. But they call these, by the way, they have a name for everything. It's so funny. So they've, they've really gone to town with their marketing on the PDP. And uh, super terrain serrations is what they call these. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now this overall width right here is a little bit wider. I measured it just tonight at 1.09 inches. The overall width is a little bit chunky at 1.33 inches. Let's say that right off the bat. So it is not a PPQ. It is not one of the thinner 
Glocks out there, well, Glocks, uh, combat pistols. That being said, it looks bulkier than it is. And the reason it does is because of the serrations. It really isn't that bulky, but it looks bulkier. So it's a visual thing, just so you know. Covering that right now. So overall, I like the looks. The serrations were an initial put off for me. Didn't look like my dad. Okay, I had to open my mind. <laughs> yeah, he brought me presents and I was like, oh, this guy's not so bad. <laughs> I'll show you the presents that the PDP brought me and you're going to be very interested, by the way. You might like him more than your dad, than your PPQ. Okay, let's not go that far. I'm getting car carried away. I'm going to throw it back on that. Okay, maybe you won't like it as much as your PPQ. And by the way, did I mention you should have one already? Too late now. All right, philosophy of use. Here's the first one. I just did an updated review on the Walther PPKS. Really fun review. It's already uploaded. I'm just waiting for its flow in, in the program, in the show. Again, Patreon guys and gals will see it first. In that video, I said this should have been the new James Bond pistol. Thank you. Thank you. Get rid of the PPK. I'm not going to go on a big rant here. I did it in the PPK and the PP reviews. Not going to do it here. You get the picture. This is a combat handgun. Give it to James Bond. The PPK can be his backup piece. Thank you. But it ain't. That's the first philosophy of use. And Walther should have tied into the studio and said, hey, we'll pay you such and such dollars. Let's put the PDP, so many P's, uh, in James Bond's hands and let's just go to town. They didn't do that. With a new James Bond movie, that would have been a perfect, perfect opportunity. What'd you say? What's that knife at the top? Oh, you guys don't miss anything, do you? Speaking of James Bond, this is a Nut and Fancy Special Edition Victor Knox G10 Cadet. And this is James Bond 007. That's right. So we laser engraved here so it doesn't wear off. And this is, look, 007 out of 600. Oh my gosh, it's got a TMP logo on it milled in now these are going to release relatively soon i don't know how this video flows they may have the video may have been announced already by the time you see this grv i don't know anyway that's what that is that's cool and by the way james bond should wear one of those yeah put that in the pocket and show it on camera next philosophy of use will be combat handgun standard i'm going to leave it at that combat handgun standard that is home defense vehicle done <laughs> done gun without rule of law LBE gun. Let me slow it up just a little bit right here. LBE gun. Is it as recommended in that POU as this gun? I would say no. Because this is a slimmer gun. More compact. It goes into a magazine pouch. And I'm talking like a rifle mag, like an M4 pouch. Pretty easily. And I demonstrated that. This one, a little bit too bulky. So I would probably say no. Just get a holster for it. Again, you can do drop down on the waistband, outside waistband is what I'm talking about, maybe horizontal carry. And I did not look into the holsters and what's compatible to it yet, but there'll be a lot of information soon enough on that. So you can just look it up. <coughs> Other than that, combat handgun standard, I'm gonna leave it at that. Features, this is where it gets interesting. So I spent time on the serrations, right? I like it a lot. It's if I were to rank the serrations overall on this gun, and again, as always, with my audience, with you guys, uh, I'm totally honest. I would probably give them 2.5 out of 5. That's about how excited I am on these serrations. I'm just like, I, I explained it already. Don't have to go into it again. Visually, okay, I get it. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Let's look at the rest of the pistol, though. Now, this is interesting here. So this is a pistol that, from its outset, was designed to accommodate a red dot. And so they really sink the red dot into the slide, the PDP. That's the first thing that makes it, as they call call it, red dot ready or something. They have another marketing term from that. I can't freaking keep track of all their marketing terms. So it really goes low. And stupidly, I did not mount a red dot on for my testing. Let me explain why. More cost, more complexity, more time. Especially time. Because you don't get uh, optic plates like you do with some other guns like Glock, for instance, the MOS models. 
you actually contact Walther on their website once you buy your PDP. Tell them which red dot optic you're going with. Maybe it's a Tridge SRO, Aimpoint ACRO, Holosun 507C, whatever, uh, Delta Point. Then they will send you the base that fits your optic. Remove that, screw it on, you're in biz. There you go. Now, what I really wish I could address, and I didn't, is I hear, I hear these sites that come on it, which are Glock compatible. I gotta put the pistol down for another round of applause. Glock compatible sites, holy crap. Hey, I can't say that about the PPQ. These are aftermarket sites and I had to go searching for these. I think they're P99 sites. Damn, they were hard to find. I hated the sites that came on it. There's too much air. I said as much in the tabletop. See, it had some quirks too. Totally did. It wasn't completely perfect. Neither's your dad. <laughs> so your red dot will go really deep in the slide and you might be lucky enough to have it co-witness in the bottom third of your optic with standard height sights, maybe these ones. I These ones look awfully short, so I'm not too sure, but maybe you get lucky and you have that and you don't have to put suppressor height sights on it. That's kind of cool. So I actually like their approach. I don't have a problem. They don't send you a bunch of optic mounting plates, which will probably get thrown in the garbage or stored and never used. The sight itself is a three dot variety. I love that. We're not seeing just a blacked out rear sight, which is, very popular and in vogue now. And I do rant against that a little bit. I do. No, we get a Glock adjustable sight. So this is just like a Glock sight. So it's adjustable for windage and elevation, which I think is fantastic. So cool that you have that on a combat handgun. That is very rare. Very rare that you have a fully adjustable sight. Mostly it's just windage adjustable. Here's a P10C. I rest my case. Yeah, so that's that's a steel sight, but windage adjustable. There's no elevation on that. So that's really cool. Polymer front sight. What I suspect is that when you get your PDP, you'll probably replace the sights. Because for whatever reason, you guys still don't like polymer sights. Where's my damn cone? That's because I hear they wear out, nothing fancy. Okay, just a mini rant here. They won't wear out when you're only shooting 125 rounds a year which you guys, if you're lucky, are shooting. There's some realness for you. Have you checked the price and availability of 9mm? It's rough, still, it's rough. Will it improve? It's been this way a long time, I don't know. I don't know, so my point is, yeah, if you're competing with a gun, you're doing thousands of presentations, I think steel sights would be a very smart upgrade. But if you're gonna put in a, without rule of law, home defense POU, vehicle POU, maybe use it as an out, a backcountry gun. Ah, don't worry about it. I wouldn't even waste my money. These are fine. They're not tritium, they're white dot, and that's all I care about. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Nope, non-tritium. I say that because sometimes I don't notice it, and I was like, oh, there's a little tritium capsule in there. Okay, I mentioned the blockiness of the site. It is. Uh, slide is what I should have said. Now, remember this one gun I reviewed? It was thicker than this gun, and I absolutely love it. The Steyr M9A1, right? L9A1. Those are great guns. I still have my M9A1. I should have brought it to the table. It's in an active system. It's thicker than this. I love that gun. So, I'm, I'm bringing that out because if a gun delivers on a lot of other fronts with its feature set, uh, maybe, you know, being the thinnest, I can... Uh, not being the thinnest, I can forgive. Great slide stop, they're calling this. I always call it a slide release. It is fantastic. I mean, it's long, it's unobtrusive. That's what she said. And ambidextrous, as you can tell. Looking on this side. And then the magazine release is in American fashion, so it's a push button, so we're not going through this anymore. I think most people would prefer that. And honestly, I would too. I, I just said on that paddle, mag release, I was like, yeah, I can adapt readily. It's not a big deal. I'll stick with that. Great mag magazine release. It is reversible to the other side if you so desire. And now we go to a great, great feature of the PDP. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I am gonna say this because I brought so many great handguns to table, like this P10C, which has a great grip actually the shape is fantastic the stippling the raised dots on it pretty good this one dominates it again 
Here comes their marketing lingo. They call it the performance duty texture. It's tetrahedrons. If you were to look at it closely, it's like raised peaks of mountains on there. Oh, do I love it. And how we've progressed from being a bunch of pussies in the gun industry. Remember when the Glock RTF came out? Everyone was like, oh my gosh, that's hurting my hand. I can't take it. I'm bleeding. Mommy. Yeah, RTF guys. I always loved the RTF. I was like, oh, that's freaking awesome. And then you'd see guys stipple their handgun and they do basically an RTF finish. Something really aggressive. Something that locks in your hand. Something if your hand gets wet with sweat, water, oil, blood, you still have traction. This... This is what I was going to say. This is the best grip I've brought to table yet. Did you hear that? The Walther PDP is the best grip I've brought to table. And notice they've included this traction, another one of my mini rants, all the way up here. So normally they use leave it smooth. Here's that P10F, and I'm sorry I keep bringing this gun, but it's a good example. This is what I'm talking about. They didn't put traction up here. It's like, are we so delicate? We can't put a couple dots up here so we can have some traction there with our thumb? I mean, that's kind of an important place, isn't it? I don't want my thumb wandering. Some guy's like, no, I don't like that. Well, don't buy a PDP because it's right there, dude. I love it. It's fully wrapped around. You got three interchangeable back straps with your PDP. Easy to swap out. They're extended on the bottom here so you won't pinch your hand fat with the mag changes. It's very easy to push out the pin. Affect a back strap change with your PDP. Easy to do. Man, I love this grip. I love it, it is so excellent. There's a lanyard attachment point, I think. I didn't try it. Look at that. They even have, uh, what is it, 25 lines per inch regular checkering on the polymer frame on the PDP. So this is why I'm saying what I'm saying. Best grip yet. It is fully tractioned. Man, oh man, does that lock in. I have gloves now, but shooting with gloves, without gloves, you're gonna love the grip if you're not a wussy. And I, well done. Notice there's a couple swells here on the side profile, not finger grooves, just kind of, it's kind of like a rolling wave on the ocean. There you go. Very comfortable grip. I love the grip angle. It's undercut right here. And I love the squared Glock-like trigger guard. Well done, Walther, once again. Well done. It's, it's like lifted from a Glock, which means to say it's awesome. It can take gloved hands, right? Even if you have winter gloves, you'll have enough room in the tr trigger guard to actuate the trigger. And that takes us to, guess what, the trigger. How about we just start off with another round of applause for the Walther PDP trigger. Yeah. Hey, Nat and Fancy, you said the PPQ trigger was like your standard of measure. Is the PDPs better, worse, or the same? Well, that's a hard question to answer because while I'm a trigger snob, I don't know if I get into the particulars of exactly why I love it. If there's plastic rub in a trigger, I hate it. And let me pull this PDPQ to remind myself. No, there's no plastic rub at all. This trigger is outstanding. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, is it PPQs, worse, better, same? Oh my gosh, it's... I would say about the same. Overall, it's about the same, which is to say it achieves greatness. Let's check the reset. Very short reset, by the way. Right here, look. Oh, dude. So I pulled this trigger at, I wrote it down. Not gonna do it on camera. Uh, it feels like it's super duper duper light. I pulled it at four pounds, 12 ounces. PDP trigger. And I like how they didn't go with a squared face. That is another fad in the pistol industry, and I don't like it. You may love it. You're like, I need a squared trigger. That's the only way I can get a good press on my thumb, on my finger pad. Not me. This is very Glock-like. Very Glock-like, which is to say it's awesome. Perfect trigger. What more can I say? I mean, you, you really have to shoot, at least dry fire the PDP to enjoy it. Standard pick and tinny rail. I shot a fair amount of rounds for this. I cleaned it too. I probably should have just left it dirty. Uh, the first time I shot it, I didn't lube it at all. We'll talk about reliability accuracy here in a second. I love the rail on this thing. Three slot variety, not like a Glock. So it gives you more uh, options. M1913 specification. 
I measured the barrel at 2.3 millimeters, if I'm remembering, yeah, 2.3 millimeters in thickness. Now there's two versions of the PD PDP right now. This is the full size version as you see. It is a modular pistol. You can actually swap components out between them. They make a compact Glock 19 style with a four inch barrel. This is a four and a half inch barreled one. And you can swap them all around. If you like, you get a compact or maybe buy other components. You can just play around with it and swap them if you want. Barrel looks just like a Glock though, just like a Glock. Polymer recoil rod, I have no problem with that at all. Not at all on the PDP, some might. One thing I would have liked them to have done a little bit better is it seems like this whole area right here just has some sharp edges. So sharp edge here, a lot of beveling going on, but there's a sharp peak right here, peak right here. I would like to have seen it a little bit more melted. I'll just leave it at that. Top look right here, no holes in the chamber, no witness holes, big old extractor. Good looking pistol. Long beaver tail on this thing too. So it buries really deep in the hand to a point when I first started shooting this, I kind of felt like I was shooting a higher bore axis until I started shooting it. And I'll discuss what I mean here in two seconds. Uh, and I think that features down and dirty and I probably forgot stuff. Oh, I did. The magazine. Look at the rounds count, dude. 18 rounds? What? 18 rounds? That's pretty good. So I mentioned how it's not really a sniper's pistol like the PPQ. And I, I knew this wasn't going to fit. I was like, well, this is a shorter magazine. It's 15 rounds. There's no way it's going to lock in. But I was like, oh, the, it looks like the angle's right. It fits, but it won't lock in this version because this is the original PPQ with this style of magazine release. Had I had a push button one, which I do, just forgot to bring it, uh, these would lock in and they are compatible with a PPQ. The only reason they're not compatible here is because they're just too short. So if you have a PPQ, you can go from PDP to PPQ, including the 15 round magazines of the PDP. I know a lot of acronyms, hang with me. So if you get the compact version of the PDP, guess what? They'll work in your PPQ. That's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. So, you know, great magazine though. Polymer base plate, high quality construction, blue follower in this version. You get two with them and the back straps too. How did it shoot? Well, I mentioned when I grabbed this, I felt like I had an XD, XDM in my hand. I felt like the bore was kind of out there until I shot it. And then I was like, okay, it shoots better, uh, at least dynamically than an XD, XDM. And I love those guns, but this seems like it was a little bit lower in hand. Reliability, 100%. Those are all headshots. You like it, yeah, don't this you? This thing is dead on, man. It's got a great, all headshots. It's got a great trigger. Awesome. Love it. I do too. Good shooting, brother. Hey, this is a... Uh, You're kicking some ass with that thing. Boy, this thing's fantastic. It is good. So let's talk about it. Um, really like the grip. Palm swells nice. Very vertical. I like that. I like the vertical grip. Trigger is fantastic, man. Nothing, I mean, you wouldn't expect anything less from Walter, but it's got a really short, clean break. And man, the reset is just nice and short. It's right there. It's awesome. I like it. How about the thickness of the slide? Are you okay with that? Yeah, thickness is okay. I think, uh, it's a little That's, bit thicker than the competition. Well, and maybe for carry, maybe that becomes an issue. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you, you know, you also got these serrations. I don't know how that would mm -hmm. work for you for carry, but uh, the point's nice. I think with this grip, it comes right up to perfect alignment. It's a great it's, grip. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, and it's actually set up for, uh, I mean, optic sights. Yeah. And the grip and everything is designed for that. I mean, we're shooting it with irons, obviously, but... It'd be a great pistol to red dot too. I really like it. I like it more than I thought it would. All right, do me a favor and go shoot the PPQ and okay, just yeah. a mag with the PPQ and we'll you see what you think. Let's do it. 
if I had something that I was going to shoot and I wanted, I mean, I was going to shoot it all the time, I'd purchase a firearm looking for something ambi, I would practice that. I never practice that because I, most things aren't set M up. They aren't. Okay. GoPro, start recording. You'll love that one too. That thing's sick. I, I think I've shot this with you before, but. Go for headshots on this one, see what okay. we can do. On it. Nice gun. Nice gun. You know, if I was going to give you a quick comparison, yeah, two things I I noticed. This has got a little bit shorter grip, mm -hmm. same angle, same palm swell. Uh, I think I like the full size grip a little better personally. Yep. I like the sights on the other guns just a little bit better, just the way that. Those are aftermarkets I put on there. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. And then, same great trigger. Walther's triggers, fantastic. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't, there's not much. Oh, one thing I was gonna say. I don't like that mag release personally. Yeah, that's the right. one thing. It's one different. Thing I'm change. Yeah, it's different. They changed it in subsequent versions, but yeah, that's one, a first edition. Yeah. Yeah. That well, said so on the side. First yeah, edition. There it is, right there. Awesome. Nice. Okay. That's with steel cased ammo, brass cased ammo, hollow points, some old crap I had left over because I am kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel. Hey, Fioki, give me a call. I want you to sponsor the project. Just saying. Yeah, so 100% reliability. That is awesome. So I'm calling it a combat handgun. We kind of need that. If it chokes on any level as a full-sized handgun, but not too great. It's not great. Okay, here's the accuracy. Now, one cool thing about this is, uh, and I, should I take that apart? I think I will. Let me take this apart right now. So they talk about on the website that you can actually retract it and you can actually take the back plate off for field stripping uh, so you don't have to pull the trigger. I always think that's stupid. I'll just, just pull the trigger. Safe direction. So we just have the Glock light tabs right here and then we push the slide forward a little bit and I hope I don't screw this up. I probably will. There it is. There you go. Striker fired a la Glock a la Glock, four rails. And I was gonna say, uh, and I'm thinking of another handgun that I'm reviewing tonight, it's not this one. So we have four standard rails here. One thing I forgot to mention about the barrel, and this is interesting, speak, going back to features, is that it has a tapering chamber in it. And if you look at the brass that you fired through your PDP, you'll see that it has kind of a squeeze on it. And that kind of forces a really tight seal in the barrel and it results in more ac uh, not accuracy. Well, maybe accuracy, but velocity. I didn't chrono this, but some guys are saying that normal rounds might approach plus P velocities in a PDP. I didn't test it. I'm just passing that along. Uh, it might be a little bit overblown. It might just be a small advantage, but you might want to be aware of it. Now, anytime I hear of like a tapering chamber, I'm always concerned about reliability. But again, the reliability on this unit was fantastic. Reassembling the PDP. So field strip, as you can see, is just easy, easy, easy. Same as a Glock. And the Glock is still a standard of measure. Here's the accuracy. About 70 yards.
Dude. What? 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 That's like one hole. That's three shots. That's six shots into one hole. This is me standing in at the range. So this is indoor range, and I hope I have the footage because a hard drive crash, uh, crashed. I think I got it. Holy cow. Great group right there, dude. Very accurate. And I said snappy recoil felt like 124s, and I forgot to mention that. It does feel a little bit snappy in overall shooting, and I did feel like I was shooting 124 grain bullets, and they were just 115s, normal pressure. I'll leave it at that. The grip... Awesome. The sights, awesome. Shoots a bit low. I didn't bother adjusting that rear sight. I could very easily do it. There's a group there, group there, group there. One shot there, group there. I actually like shooting at the range. I probably ought to do it a little bit more. Sometimes I'm shooting in a, like a 20 mile an hour wind. It's rough. Uh, I gave myself a squiggly mark on that one. Not so great. Good grip look, dude. That's what you need to take take away from the PDP. It's a one hole group pistol. This is me hand holding it. It's not, you know, on a rest. So there's some human factors involved and sometimes I just suck. I didn't today on this day, dude. Look, awesome. Look at that, fantastic. Really excellent. All right, you might be asking yourself, is it as accurate as a PPQ? Yes. PPQ was just as accurate. I mean, I could shoot the same with a PPQ. On par. How about a Glock 17? How about a Glock 17 is also very accurate. There's a Zev Glock I shot. This is a stock Glock 17. So there you go. Shooting. Uh, dude, I was at 15 yards with that? What? That's crazy good. The Glock. Between the Zev and the regular Glock. And I'll mark the Zev. Look at the Zev right there. Oh my gosh. 15 yards, handheld. There's video out there proving it too. If you think I made this up, go watch that Zev Glock review. If YouTube has not deleted it, because they've been deleting a lot of my videos and I would love to leave YouTube. Please subscribe to my other feeds shown below the video. I want to bounce. But apparently everybody in YouTube loves YouTube, including gun guys. They complain about YouTube. They're like, they, ain't, they don't follow me to other platforms. They don't. Maybe one day, maybe one day. Shooting dynamics, therefore, were very fun, very accurate, fast, fast, fast. Guys that know a lot more about pistols than me say this, that the PDP is allowing them to score better than any other polymer handgun they've ever fired. I think that was uh, contained in the American Rifleman Review. You might look that up. But they're saying the splits are fast, great trigger, great accuracy, just a really cool competition-like combat handgun. Miss is nothing fancy, and I'm so glad I remembered to say this. You, you've seen her shooting it. She loved the PDP. I am not kidding you. On it. Keep these fingers straight. Never mind. It's out. <laughs> you like it, don't you? Yeah, I like that one too. It's nice, it's huh? huge. I'm surprised I like it with my hand. It shoots pretty it's soft good. though, doesn't it? Yeah. Little, does it feel snappy the and recoil? The trigger's soft, like, I feel like, because there's a couple, one time I just remember going, whoa. Didn't even hardly know I was like pulling the Really trigger, nice boom, trigger on it. Went. But yeah. You'd buy that gun? Yes. <laughs> Does it seem like it's bulky to you? Well, I like a big gun? A, yeah, a, like fat. It just is big. Yeah. Which I usually don't like big for my hands, but. But you're used to I things like, like that, aren't you? 
I liked it. <laughs> huh? Ooh, I like it. Yeah, if it was a little bit narrower in the slide, it'd be really awesome. Uh-huh, but it shoots great. Yeah, 25 ounces. She's like, this gun is awesome. And she has small hands. I mean, this is kind of a big grip for her and she has like small sized women's gloves. And dude, she's like, oh, I love that. Love that gun, totally. Uh, the gun is outstanding. It has some quirks. I've covered them very honestly. Would I buy a Walther PDP? Here's my cone. Yes, I would totally buy one. I'm surprised that I liked it. Sometimes, just sometimes, stepdads don't suck. This stepdad does not suck. It has a lot of great features. Red dot ready. Oh, and I forgot to mention this. It's also flared right here on the front strap. So when you tighten your grip up, it kind of pushes that muzzle down so it aligns your red dot quicker. I know, and it doesn't uh, interfere with shooting irons if that's what you're wondering. But that's what this portion is right here. Kind of cool. Some thinking going into the PDP. Yes, I would buy this gun. I'd buy this gun. Would I sell my PPQ to buy a PDP? And if that's my only choice, my answer is hell no. No way. Don't sell your PPQ. I don't care if it's a first edition, second edition, M2 or what. Keep them. They're awesome. They don't have the rounds. They're down three rounds to this. Competitive options. Well, I'm already at my target time for this. This is a great handgun, and I want the world to know it. How about the Taurus G3? Go watch my review. Yeah, that's right. I said Taurus. It's awesome. This gun is awesome. Fantastic. G3, very lightweight, slimmer than the PDP. It was 100% reliable in all our testing. Here we see the weirdness of not continuing the traction up high, and we have a thumb indentation here. It's got a great trigger. 17 rounds in the G3. It's much less expensive. Don't forget about the G3. It is a fantastic competitive option. I showed you the P10C. Still love that gun. It's heavier. This gun's, uh, I think, like three ounces heavier. But it's bigger. Holds one more round. I just love the gun. E even with this texture, I can live with it. And I'm not changing it. And then, of course, we have the uh, beloved... Glock 17, which I have right here. Then I was smart enough to get my Gen 4 for this review. The Glock 17 is the Glock 17, still a standard of measure. It's got quirks. It's got quirks. So we've got, you know, grip texturing here. Not as good as this. Great magazine release, undercut. I told you this is very similar. Very similar. The one thing I will say is that notice how this flares out right here and the Glock does not do that right here. And I'm so glad I saw that weight. 25.5 ounces. This is one ounce lighter than a 17. And I totally forgot to tell you the weight. 24.6 ounces. The PDP. It looks like it'd be heavier, right? Not so much. Single slot accessory rail. I like this one better. But Glocks are Glocks. They're just reliable. I have Heine straight eights on this. I really love these sights. Really love them. Uh, you know, which between these two, I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to answer. Both outstanding guns. All right, wrapping it up. It's a recommended pistol. That's right, the PDP by Walther. I, I'm surprised. I was literally ready for this thing to come to tabletop, and I was going, this thing sucks. Don't buy it. <laughs> this is a Rat 1, Cerakoted by myself in the day. Actually, this is uh, Duracoated by myself. We've got a beautiful mini GT McLaren Senna in orangish red. Guess what my watch is for this review? And I'm not talking about the one on the table, the one I'm wearing. How about a Tag Hoor? $3,500 Altavia chronograph with a rotating bezel. And yeah, I took this son of a gun apart and hands modded it. Sapphire crystal, it is fabulous. Worth $3,500? Uh, I'm not gonna say no, it just depends. Just depends on what your valuation is. You know, I just don't know. It's a great watch, a really cool. 44 millimeters across. Sop with Camel, and this is a Fokker DR1. Very cool. Wrapping it up, thanks so much for being a donor, for subscribing. At the very least, please subscribe, hit the notification bell in YouTube so you can be alerted when I have another dumb gun review like this. Nothing fancy.